Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. Really quick this morning, I want to talk to you from the topic of the blame game. Happy Monday. I want to talk to you from the topic of the blame game. What am I talking about today? Accountability is is a hard thing. It's not hard for us to hold other people accountable, but we experience extreme difficulty when it comes to holding ourselves accountable. What do I mean? What I mean is we tend to be able to look at everybody else's circumstances and situations and see what they've done wrong and what they're doing wrong and what they should do. But then when it comes to us, we always want to play the victim role. We can never look at what we've done and what we have come in agreement with that may have contributed to the misfortune that we have experienced in our life. We can play King Solomon. We are so wise when it comes to everybody else in their life and their situations. And yet when it comes to us, we can't see what we have done wrong. Accountability is difficult when it pertains to self-accountability. Accountability is difficult when it comes to holding yourself responsible and looking at what you did wrong to contribute to the situations at hand. We have a hard time doing that and it's human nature. We don't like to hold ourselves accountable, but it is very easy for us to look at everybody else and hold them accountable in the way that they should be held accountable, right? I, what am I talking about today? I want to give you a scripture. Turn with me in your Bibles uh, to Job, the first chapter. Let's go down to the sixth verse. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan very well then. Everything he has is in your power. This is what God told Satan about Job and his belongings. The Lord said to Satan, very well, then everything he, Job, has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. What am I telling you the scripture about today? Because God, what it tells you is that God has a hedge fence of protection around his children, the ones whom he desires to do so for. There are certain ones of us that God has a hedge fence of protection around us so that Satan cannot come and have his way with us. There are some of us that God has offered up like he did Job because God already knows the end result and God knows that you can withstand the test. He wouldn't put more on you than you can bear. And so there are many of us that God has offered up like he did Job. And in that case, it's easy for us to not hold ourselves accountable. But there are, are others of us, right, who God still has a hedge fence of protection around, and yet we can't seem to understand what is going wrong in our lives. Well, if God has a hedge fence of protection around us and our belongings so that Satan cannot touch us, if God has not offered us up, right, if God has not offered us up to Satan and said, here, Satan, have your way with him, just don't touch him, if God has not done that for us, then what has happened and caused the misfortune in our life? This is what many of us struggle with. And so instead of us looking within, we look externally and we want to play the blame game. We want to blame our misfortune on everybody else, but we never want to look at ourselves and hold ourselves accountable. We never want to look at ourselves and say what we did wrong. We never want to look at ourselves and admit what we have done wrong to contribute to our misfortunes and circumstances. What is my word for today? My word for today is that if you don't start holding yourself accountable,
If you don't stop playing the blame game, what's going to happen is you're going to continuously find yourself in cycles over and over and over and over again because you have not admitted, acknowledged, and become aware of the things that you did to contribute to your current circumstances. So if you don't know that you've done something wrong, and if you haven't acknowledged that you've done something wrong, then guess what happens? You continue to do the same thing over and over again, and then we want to blame Satan and say that Satan that has us in cycles when in actuality it, it is ourself. We want to play the blame game and blame mama, blame daddy, blame babe, blame whoever it is. We want to blame everybody else. We want to blame, some of us even blame God. We want to blame everybody else, but we don't want to look at ourselves and talk about what we did to contribute to our circumstances. God has a hedge fence of protection around you so that Satan doesn't have access to you. But what Satan loves to do is he loves to influence you to sabotage yourself. He loves to influence you to sabotage your own destiny. What do I mean? God has a hedge fence of protection around you to keep you safe. God has a hedge fence of protection around you to protect you from illness, right? But what Satan will do since he can't touch you is he will try to use influence to get you to break down the hedge fence of protection, to get you to sabotage yourself, to get you to sabotage the blessings and the prayers and the uh, promises of God. That is what Satan will do. He wants you to sabotage. If he can't get to you, then he's trying to get you to sabotage yourself. Let me give you an example. So if God has a hedge fence of protection around you and he is protecting you from illness, right? He is protecting you from disease. Well, Satan can't touch you, but what Satan can do is influence you with his music. So here you are a good, a good girl or a good boy, and you're living a life of abstinence. You are living a clean lifestyle. You are living a right righteous lifestyle. But what happens is Satan starts introducing you to his music. And by you listening to music that is talking about laying up all day and all night, guess what happens? The influence of Satan has now affected your decisions and your actions. And now you become promiscuous. Now Satan didn't have to touch you. God had his hedge fence of protection around you. God didn't give you up to Satan, so he didn't give Satan permission to mess with you. Instead, what Satan did was influence you to sabotage yourself. So now because you are listening to things that you know are ungodly, it has now influenced you to step out of righteousness and to step out of the will of God. Now you become promiscuous and what happens? Now illness comes in. Now you get a transmitted, uh, a transmitted disease, just in case there's kids listening. You get a transmitted disease. Why? Not because Satan did it, not because God did it, because you did it to yourself. Let me give you another example. God gives you a lump sum of money. He's worked with you over and over again about spending your spending habits and the things that you do when you do get money, right? He's put a hedge for self protection around you and your finances, right? But here's what Satan does. Satan doesn't like to see you with resources, so he can't touch you. God hasn't given him permission to touch your finances. God has not given him permission to touch your business. But here's what he does. He sends a nice looking woman your way. And what do you want to do, young man? You want to take your money and blow it on this woman to make her happy. Blow it on this woman and splurge on her because of what she makes you feel like. Now, what has happened is you have now stepped out of righteousness. You have now stepped out of the parameters and the guidelines that God gave you for your finances. You stepped out of line. You did it. God didn't do it. God didn't tell you to go blow money on a female. Satan didn't make you do it. Satan didn't uh, hold you up, hold you hostage and make you go blow your money, that lump sum of money that God blessed you with. Satan didn't make you go and blow it on a female. No. Instead, what he did was entice you with lust and you fell for it. Now you find yourself without finances again, and you find yourself in financial trouble. And now you want to blame Satan. You want to blame the woman. You want to blame God. You want to blame everybody else but yourself. Well, God has told you about uh, lust and the traps of lust. He tells us about all, all these things in his word. He warns us of these things. And so what Satan will do, he can't get to us. God has a hedge fence of protection around us and God has not given us up to Satan. <laughs> so what he does is he influences us and, and makes us, he influences us and encourages us and supports us to sabotage ourselves. 
He doesn't have to lift a finger. He doesn't have to touch us. But yet the demise comes nonetheless. And how did it come? If it didn't come from Satan, if it didn't come from other people, and it didn't come from God, it comes from us. This is why we have to stop playing the blame game and stop looking at everybody else and take a minute to see what it is that we've done to contribute to our circumstances. If we can acknowledge and see and become aware of what we've done to contribute to our finances and to contribute to our circumstances and to contribute to our illness and to contribute to our trauma, to contribute to our misfortune, if we can look at the role that we played in it, now we can learn some lessons, but first it starts with accountability and holding yourself responsible when the shoe fits. Sometimes it's necessary for us to put the shoe on our own foot and wear it. Stop playing the victim role and blaming Satan and everybody else and blaming God and everybody else but us. There are things that we have done to sabotage our destiny. There are things that we have done to sabotage the promises of God. There are things that we have done to sabotage the new season and the new life that God has for us. If we don't stop playing the blame game and start holding ourselves accountable, if we don't look at what we've done wrong so that we cannot do it again and make it right. If we don't do that, we will constantly be in cycles and we won't be able to play the blame game and blame it on Satan and blame it on your ex and blame it on God and blame it on mama and blame it on daddy and blame it on the kids and blame it on the instructor and blame it on everybody else. Blame it on the white man, blame it on the black man, blame it on the system, blame it on everybody else. But we have to hold ourselves accountable. If we will hold ourselves accountable, guess what? We will see some things and we will be able to look at ourselves and see what we have done wrong. When we stop playing the, blame, playing the blame game, we will be able to look at ourselves and see what we've done wrong so that we can take those wrongs, learn from those lessons, and make them right in the next season that God has for us. I love you. I'm Grace Amber. I hope that word blessed you. I'll be right back on tomorrow with another word. Good Lord willing.